Have you ever heard people decreeing and declaring and then you were confused because you never heard that before and you were wondering, what is this new thing? And maybe because you didn't know better, you even joined in and you started decreeing and declaring as well. Well, today I'm going to give you five reasons why decreeing and declaring is not biblical. Five reasons why you need to stop making declarations when you pray. And here's how you should pray instead. Hello guys, and welcome to the channel that gives you biblical answers to difficult questions. Today we're talking about decree and declare. This is the latest fad to infiltrate the church, and if you attend a charismatic church, there is a strong chance that you probably hear this all the time. But in case you've been living under a rock for the past 15 years, here is what decree and declare sounds like. I declare and decree that the plans and the purposes of God shall prevail. The word of God prevails. I decree, hallelujah, that my money is coming together. My business is coming together. Father, I decree and declare, hallelujah, that the floodgates of heaven are open. Let it rain. All right, that was Cindy Trim, and she goes on like that for about half an hour. And you notice a pattern. She is taking things that people normally pray for, but instead of saying, Lord, I pray that you will help me with my job interview. I pray that you will help me to be able to afford a new car. Rather, you're using the words decree and declare instead. I decree and declare that I will be successful in that job interview. I decree and declare that I am prosperous and I will be able to afford a new car. I mean, in 2000 years of church existence, nobody did that. Why are people suddenly praying like that? Well, they believe that that makes their prayers more powerful. But I'm actually going to show you that it does the opposite. That is more likely to hinder your prayers than to make it more powerful. So here are five reasons why decree and declare is not biblical. Reason number one, nobody in the Bible prayed like that. Jesus didn't do it, Paul didn't do it, Peter didn't do it. Why on earth are you decreeing and declaring? That's a major red flag right there. Jesus said, follow me. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And if those guys didn't pray like that, why are you praying like that? In fact, if you look at decree and declare, it's not prayer at all. Prayer means talking to God. Prayer means asking God for something, making your supplication known to God. When you decree and declare, I decree and declare that I am prosperous. I decree and declare that I will have a new car. Who are you talking to? It's not God. You're just speaking into the atmosphere. So decree and declare is not actually prayer at all. Here's how Jesus taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Let your will be done. He never taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we hallow your name. We call forth your kingdom. We speak your word into being. I decree and declare that my earthly needs are met. He, that's not how Jesus told us to pray. So nobody in the Bible prayed like that. And nobody in the Bible taught us to pray like that. So that's reason number one. And, and that alone, I should end this video right now. That alone is sufficient to discredit, decree, and declare. But I actually have four more reasons. So reason number two. People who are into the decree and declare movement, they overestimate the authority that we have in Christ. Yes, we do have authority in Christ. But not all authority. We only have some authority. Jesus said, All authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. That me meaning Jesus. And now go into all the world, preach the gospel. So God only gives us authority as we need it. But the Word of Faith movement has overstated that authority. It has ascribed to us more authority than we really have. A favorite scripture of the Word of Faith movement is Romans 4.17. Speaking of Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So they will tell you, there you have it. We have the authority. Christians have the authority to, 
to call forth things which do not exist, to speak realities into being. Now, let's look at that verse again. This is not a matter of context or Bible study or ex exegesis. This is about simple English, reading and understanding simple English. I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, comma, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. That's talking about God. That's talking about something that God could do, and in fact it's referring to the initial creation of the world. If Abraham had that ability, he had no reason to believe or to trust in God. He could have just called it forth on his own. The reason he had to trust God is because God alone had that authority and that power. The Word of Faith people put themselves in the place of God. They ascribe to themselves power and authority that only God has. Now technically that's pride. Pride is putting yourself in the place of God and we know for a fact that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So if you have pride in your prayer, tell me, does that make your prayer more powerful or does that make God more likely to reject your prayer? Reason number three. And if you've been blessed so far by this, feel free to hit that like button and put a comment in the section below. I would really appreciate the encouragement. Reason number three. We decree and declare there is a strong emphasis on our will rather than God's will. When you say, I decree and declare that I will be successful in that job interview, I will have that new car, you are assuming that it is God's will for that to happen. There is no place in your prayer for God to say, no, my child, that is not my will or this is not my timing and I don't want you to have that now. When you decree and declare, you have already resolved that you are going to get this no matter what. And you are essentially looking for any kind of formula that will bend God and make God bend to your will. God is not a mathematical formula that needs to be solved. God is a person that you need to have a relationship with. Stop trying to decode God but rather understand him and submit to his will. Jesus taught us to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And even Jesus himself, when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, this is what I really want. If it's possible for this cup to pass from me, Lord, I would really appreciate that. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He did not decree and declare that that cup would pass from him. He humbly submitted himself to the Father's will. First John teaches us that whatever we pray according to his will, he will hear. True prayer always submits to God's will. And true prayer is always open to the possibility that God may choose in his sovereign will and wisdom to not answer your prayer. In 2 Corinthians 12, Paul talked about a thorn in the flesh that was given to him, a messenger of Satan to buffet him, and he pleaded with God three times. Notice, he did not decree and declare that the thorn would be removed. He pleaded with God. But then God revealed to him, No, I'm not going to remove that thorn. I'm giving you that thorn for a reason, lest you be puffed up. My grace is sufficient for you, so I'm not going to take this away from you. Rather, I'm going to give you the strength to go through it. And once Paul understood that that was the will of God, he submitted himself to God's will and he no longer prayed for that thorn to be removed. He said instead, I will glory in my tribulations. Reason number four why decree and declare is not biblical. Job chapter 22 verse 28. So I'm pulling out the big guns now. You will declare a thing and it will be established for you. And some versions of the Bible say, you will decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Whoa, so am I saying that that is a reason why decree and declare is not biblical? But, but the Bible clearly says, you will decree a thing or declare a thing and it will be established. So how could I say it's not biblical? All right, so let me give you 
some important keys to understanding how to interpret the Bible, how to rightly divide the Word of God. Who is speaking? And how reliable is that person? Do you know that the Bible says there is no God? Right there in the middle of Psalm 14 verse 1, it says there is no God. Those four words appear consecutively in the Bible. There is no God. But important question, who is speaking? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So the Bible is not teaching that there is no God, but rather the Bible is simply teaching that the fool believes that there is no God. The Bible is still correct. The Bible correctly recognizes what the fool incorrectly believes. Let's apply that now to Job 22 verse 28. Who is speaking? The entire 22nd chapter of Job was spoken by one of Job's friends called Eliphaz. Job had three friends who said a lot of things. Right? They said some good things. They said some bad things. The question is, how reliable is Eliphaz? Should we be listening to this guy? Should we be allowing this guy to teach us how to pray? Well, look at Job 42 verse 7. After Job and his friends had spoken and said all that they had to say, God finally shows up at the end of the book and he breaks his silence. He rebukes Job for his arrogance. Then he turns to to Job's three friends and here's what he said. The Lord said to Eliphaz, My wrath is kindled against you and your friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right. Here is God rebuking Eliphaz for not speaking that which was right. Eliphaz is the guy who said, You will decree a thing and it will be established unto you. And God rebuked him for not speaking that which was right. This is like the ending of Sixth Sense, when you realize that Bruce Willis's character was dead all along, and that invalidated everything you believed in the movie up to that point, and you had to watch the entire movie again to make sense of it. I hope I, hope I didn't spoil Sixth Sense for you, those of you who didn't see it. All right, but it's like that. Job's friends said all of the things that they said. But then here is God showing up at the end and saying, you all were wrong. So now you have to read the entire book of Job again with that understanding in order to make sense of it. If God had said, you will decree a thing and it will be established, we have no choice but to believe it. We all should be decreeing and declaring. But it was Eliphaz who said that and God rebuked him for not speaking that which was right. So that tells me that all this verse really teaches is that Eliphaz believed that you could decree and declare, but Eliphaz was wrong. That verse does not support decree and declare. In fact, that verse is a reason why you should not be decreeing and declaring. And finally, reason number five, and guys, if you would like to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and make sure you click on the bell icon so you could get notified whenever I post a new video. Reason number five, Psalm number two, verse seven. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son today. I have begotten you. So notice that that verse has both words declare and decree. But it doesn't exactly say, I will decree and declare, does it? It says, I will declare the decree. Colon, notice the punctuation, the Lord has said to me. So what's the decree? The decree is what comes after the colon. The Lord has said. So the decree is what God said. God is the one who decrees. God's word is his decree. And the psalmist is saying, I will declare God's decree. The word for declare is, is the same word as translated boost. I will boost in your precepts. I will delight in your word. That is what declare means. Declare is just an English word that means to say, but to say it in a boastful way. There is nothing mystical or magical about a declaration. It's just an English word. Anything that comes out of your mouth is technically a declaration. The psalmist is saying, God has decreed in his word, God has spoken, and I will declare and boast 
and glory in what God has said. I will delight in God's word. God is the only one who could decree. We could only declare and boast and delight in what God has said. So I just gave you five reasons why you should stop decreeing and declaring. The Bible doesn't teach that we should decree and declare when we pray. In fact, instead, the Bible teaches you should ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Humble yourself before God. Prayer is not a formula that you use to unlock God or to get God to act on your behalf or to make God do what you want. Prayer is a way of humbling yourself before God where you say, God, I really need this. I really need a new car because my old car isn't working anymore. Lord, I humbly beseech you that you will provide for me in some way so that I'll be able to afford a new car. But Lord, if it is not your will, give me the grace to be able to get by without it. That's prayer. Humbling yourself before God and humbling yourself to God's will. And the Bible says when you humble yourself before God, He will exalt you. But God resists the proud. So how would you rather pray? Would you rather just sound spiritual by decreeing and declaring and following whatever the latest fad is? Or would you actually prefer to pray prayers that avail much? that makes much power available. Humble yourself before God and He will exalt you. Be anxious for nothing, but with all prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God. Talk to God. Just tell God what you want and submit to God's will. And what and whether God chooses to answer your prayer or not, whether His answer is yes or no, just accept it. Humble yourself before God. Serve God anyway. That's what the Bible teaches. So on your screen right now is another video for you to check out. I pray that you'll be blessed by it. So God bless you and I will see you all next time.